All right, I'd like to call this uh, meeting of the Waitley Select Board uh, open at 6.01 p.m. Uh, looking at our agenda, our first item is meeting minutes to review and approve the meeting minutes from November 29th. Are there any comments or additions, I didn't subtractions? See Minor misspelling on page three. Oh, no. oh man. The reconstruction project, Brian informed board. That's it. Rather than form. Okay. Board. Otherwise, well, take a motion on those uh, amended minutes. I move to approve the minutes as amended. Second. All those in favor? Fred? Aye. Julie? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Great. Item number two is vendor and payroll warrants. Do we have any <laughs> comments or questions on those? No. no. Okay, great. All right, item three is public comment. This is time to um, hear comments from the public uh, related to items not listed on the agenda. We have one hand up from the audience. Okay. Um, I can't see them very well, but I, I'll be able to see them once they start to speak. Yes, sir. Oh, Neil Abram, uh, 184, just a plain room. Now hey, that Neil. the the former water district is essentially replaced by connecting most of those houses to the Wakeley Water Department water system. I'm finding that I'm more interested in the Whiteley Water Department, and I can't find minutes of the meetings of those commissioners uh, since about uh, six or seven years ago. Uh, so I can't follow that. Did you Here say six nine, or seven years ago? Six or seven years ago. Oh, I think 2014 okay. was the most recent one that I found, but I could have missed one. And I also wanted to report that those of us who paid our $5,000 for the connection fee have yet to hear from the water department about the modification of the water meters that will be needed for us to be billed. And so we are all receiving free water and have since the connection was established. So that might be something that the town should look to the water department commissioners to attend to. And finally, we were washing clothes one day and our washing machine turned off because the water department had decided to install a new fire hydrant and just turn the water off. And then when they turned it back on, out came lots of dirty water. And had we not known to take our clothes out of the washing machine, we would have made them dirtier than cleaner. It would be nice if the water department notified its clients when the water is going to be turned off. And that seems not to be a strong point for the way they manage. Um, so I wanted to bring that to the attention of the select board and hope that the select board will help to take a hand in overseeing that semi-independent operation that is uh, not meeting all of its responsibilities. Thanks. Thank you, Neil. Um, I don't have any information that might address anything that Neil said there. Um, Brian or Amy or I suppose other folks in the room, does anybody actually have any information that would be helpful here or is this something we should uh, just look outside. Look at outside of our meeting time. I think that's mostly the, the course of action. Um, yeah. uh, especially for the the meter modification question and the comment, and then the comment about the notification to customers. Yeah. Um, I believe that the meeting minutes exist. Um, Amy probably knows more than Amy Town Clerk Amy Schrader probably knows more than I do. Um, but I imagine I, I imagine that they're not on the website. Hmm. So certain departments, boards, and committees 
retain their own meeting minutes. So the way you can request meeting minutes from those departments or committees is you could put a public records request into me and I could ask them for that. However, I would like to entertain maybe amending our bylaw to that, that all department boards and committees meeting minutes be sent to me and then it's required that I would post them on the to the, to the website within 30 days. Um, I feel like the okay. website is where our residents should be getting the information from and they can get it quickly. Um, but that's that's a way to handle it now, Neil, and hopefully in the future we can make it so this doesn't happen. Thank you. So we need a bylaw change for that to happen? Yeah, we, we do. We would need to amend the current bylaws. Right now, they're, mm. you're allowed to hold, they're allowed to retain their meeting minutes and upon request, you know, supply them. Um, mm. It wouldn't. All right. I, yeah. How would we go about? Do, are you willing to to draft that bylaw, Amy? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> it's not. I was trying to do, have something that I, I don't give to Brian to do. Um, <laughs> I can. I can. I can help. I can do that. Okay. Because I. I. So I thought that was already the case, but um. So I'm glad this came up. We can. That sounds like a problem we can fix. Um, I know we had talked at a recent meeting about the money to pay for the water meters and finding a place for that to come from. And I thought that was, um, at least the money might be there. Maybe the water meters aren't there yet, in which case you're getting free water. And, um, but I'd like to find out more about what's, what the status of the water meters are then. And then the notification that that's a problem that we, yeah, that shouldn't happen unless it's an emergency. Um, that uh, that people should get notification if the water's going to get turned off. Yeah. Okay. Is there? Uh, oh, yeah. Is there anybody else here who wants to Good chime question. in? Recently, it seemed that we were discussing uh, money for meters that were going to be put on town buildings. Did we also right. discuss meters, money for meters to be put on individual residences, mm -hmm. which is, I think, what this is. Those are, those are separate issues. One is, I, yeah, one I, is I think the private hookups, which have paid five thousand dollars for the yeah. privilege of hooking up, right. expected that part of the five thousand dollars would, would be cover meter. The, the meter modification. Right. Okay. Yeah. okay. We'll have to follow up on the meters then. Yes. Yeah. Follow up. Right. Thank you. Was there any other public comment today? I think I see Neil pointing to someone. She shook her head no. Oh, okay. All right. How Great. do we want to I'm sorry, how do we want to address the uh water department notifying customers when they're turning water on and no. off? I think that's a perfect thing for Brian to look into. Right. So the so water commissioners are an elected board. Yeah. Um, so it would you know most likely be a, a letter from the select board to the water commissioners. Okay addressing or asking a question about I, I guess all three of these topics maybe the third one is more of a recommendation that they take certain action yeah um cool. when those situations come up yeah and I think Thank the you. first one is more a question for bylaws and taking it up at a yeah. raising that and making it warm to town meeting yeah, and Amy's correct. There are other elected boards um, that don't make their meeting when it's available for posting on the website. And that's not something that really the town clerk can compel or the select board can compel them to do. A sort of a general bylaw that's mm -hmm. adopted by the residents can compel them to do that. And then the question is if they don't, then we don't want to go down that path because. It would get messy and it shouldn't be a big problem, right? It's little problems, little solution, well, big problem, kind of big problem, but simple solution, I should say. So, yeah. I, I think it would probably be a good idea to have all these boards and commissions that are not currently required to post minutes change the bylaws such that they are. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah, when make a bylaw effective, it has to be approved at um, a, a town, meeting. town meeting, probably at this yeah. point, most likely annual town meeting. 
Yeah, and I'm, I mean, we believe they exist. I mean, we believe that the meeting minutes exist because they need to under the under the open meeting law. It's just a matter of it's not that hard. Yeah. Okay. So no. And thank you again for coming forward on that. Okay. Well, our next item are scheduled appointments. And we're only a little bit late on that. Amy Schrader Town Clerk will um, ask us about switching the official polling location back to the town offices at Fort Sandy Lane. Um, so uh, maybe I should let Amy have a minute to tell us why that's a good idea. So I don't necessarily want to have to make this change, but logistically, it's much easier for me and um, to hold the elections here at the town offices. Um, I have all of the supplies here. I have my state computer here. Um, I will have early voting set up here, so I don't need to take everything down and move it to the town hall. Um, so Massachusetts general law requires that I notify every registered voter in town of a voting location change if you guys vote to do so, which would be changing it from the town hall back to the town offices. So originally in 2016, all uh, local, state, and federal elections were held here. Um, then when COVID, COVID hit, um, some elections were held at the Waitley Elementary School, and then they were some elections were held at the town hall. Um, for COVID um, safety requirements and social distancing, um, which has worked out. And last year I did hold, or this year, excuse me, I held the elections at the town hall and it's a beautiful building. And, um, you know, I want to accommodate the townspeople as much as possible with, you know, the location of the elections. Um, but I think all around logistically here is much easier. Um, so that's, and unfortunately, what I would love to do, but I can't do, is hold our annual town election at the town hall mm -hmm. and hold all state and federal elections here where the foot tra traffic is heavier. Um, but I would need to know, I would, that, I can't do that. I have to stay consistent with polling locations. So that's why I'm requesting that we move, change the polling location from the town hall to the town offices. Mm -hmm. Um, do you happen to have any feedback from voters about locations? Not from individual voters, no. So I did talk to Lynn Sibley, our previous town clerk, and to see, like, do our, do numbers drastically change when we're at the town hall versus the town offices? Um, she said there's too many variables with elections, that it depends on who's running, you know, if there's a contested election, if there's not. So what I would like to see is if the numbers do drop, maybe I do need to change the polling location back to the town hall. Um, I'm also, you know, I have to come back to the board in probably a couple months about having early in-person voting and vote by mail um, for our local election. Um, so it's gonna, it's gonna be interesting to see, you know, how those factor in too, also with a change of, um voting location so not individual voters no i have not talked to okay hmm. okay does anybody in the room have a strong opinion i think that it it makes amy's job easier and you know just less inconvenient to do and also if, you know if there are any issues that you have to check your records you you're here to to check that, but I think it it was there was never any problems having the elections here. It's just they yeah. moved to the town hall for other reasons. And I see no reason not to move back here. I would agree. Consistency is nice. Yeah. It's nice not having to go, where do I go to vote this yeah. time? Yeah. 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 I yeah, so, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, Joyce, we have a hand in the audience. So. Okay. Um, I just have a question. Please go ahead. Sorry. My name is Rachel Stoller. I actually live in Montague, okay. but um, I'm here for another presentation. But I'm, I'm wondering, are there any transportation considerations? Like mm -hmm. for people that don't have easy transportation, is it is the mm -hmm. 
so my, other places more <laughs> so my understanding is frta only runs on state on five and ten so they don't so our town hall which i don't know if you're familiar with where that is crossing the weight land yep. so there's no like public transportation there or the weight elementary school there's not and this building there's not so I would yeah. hope that our townspeople would be friendly enough to kind of accommodate and, and find out or through word of mouth if people needed help to get there. Um, but unfortunately, we yeah. don't have any transportation no. options. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, both places are equally inconvenient, probably, <laughs> for, for the vast majority of people. Because um, uh, although there are probably more people who can walk to the old town hall than who can walk to Sandy Lane. Um, it's not a large segment of the population. Yeah. So, okay. Well, um, I would not object to having a vote on this now unless there's more discussion. It seems like we've, we're kind of at a consensus that this is worth trying. Okay. Oh, and I just have one more thing. I would just appreciate a vote now because what the what the uh, division of elect local elections will let me do is put my mailing to all registered voters in my census. So it's going to cut down on um, postage down. for that. So which is kind of why I'm, I'm here now yeah. and not a little later in the Yeah. Well, I would entertain a motion then. I will move that we move the town's official polling location to town offices from town hall where they have been recently. I'll second it. All right. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor, Fred? Yes. Julie? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Amy. Um, <clears throat> our next uh, person up on their scheduled appointments is Neil Abram for <laughs> speaking for the Waitley Historical Society in this case to discuss the renewal of the Waitley Historical Society's lease at the town hall and for the select board to vote on whether to renew the lease. So Neil, um, if you have uh, a few words to say or? So, so yes, a few words. Um, we have, since the town hall reopened, uh, we have had an annual lease for the Waitley Historical Society to use um, what is maybe um, about a quarter of the square footage on the first floor for its offices and museum. Uh, there was an agreed upon uh, quarterly fee that the Historical Society should pay. Um, and for a little while, the Historical Society paid that and then several residents um, have made contributions of their excess um, solar electricity generation to the town hall to be credited against the bill to the historical society. And so uh, the town is getting its money in advance, in fact, has a lot of money in advance. And there's a, over a thousand dollars of credit uh, built up um, that would pay some of the future bills before eventually probably the bills exceed the uh, generation credits. Um, we are asking that instead of having to renew annually, that you entertain our proposal for the next lease to be a three-year lease. Uh, we are already several months late in renewing the most recent lease and it's hard to keep track, it'll be hard to keep track of anyway, but if the relationship is satisfactory, then it seems that we can make a multi-year lease uh, and reduce the annual hassle that it has been. Uh, as to the rate, um, the rate was set without knowledge of what the costs would be in sharing the costs of utilities. Uh, the usage has changed dramatically. The, the first year that it was open, the Whitley Historical Society was uh, meeting in the building about 40% of all meetings. And now it's less than a quarter. Um, in 2022, 
there were 233 meetings of various sorts held in one or another of the meeting rooms in town offices and the historical society might be in its museum space might have been there for about 80 um, different days um, and a couple hours per day so uh, probably the utility costs have gone up because more people are coming in and turning up the heat or turning down um, the air conditioning um, so it, it's hard to know what the right fraction of that should be but the historical society is now a much smaller fraction of the use of the building but we're happy to, to keep the rate um, as it was if that's acceptable to the select board mm -hmm. the um the you're not charged separately for uh, for electricity, correct? No, there was an agreed upon yeah. fraction of the original projected cost at projected to be four hundred dollars a quarter. Yeah, and that's what we've been billed, or that's what's been charged against yeah. the accumulated credit. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'm I don't imagine we actually have. Uh, like any kind of analysis of the last year or so to argue differently. Um, uh, we, our electricity rates have not gone up tremendously from the source side because of the municipal aggregation. So I don't know that there's a good argument for raising the cost. Um, this would freeze in the cost for three years, but I think we've got at least three years left or approximately I think we have four years left on the municipal aggregation um, or somewhere in the three to four year range. So a three year lease is not likely to commit us to um, any particular, you know, disparity there. Um, I would also like to say that we have two additional things that can be done. Uh, one, the town has um, an organization monitoring the efficiency of the heating and cooling system. There may be some information from that, but also the uh, thermostats for the different zones in the building are not very conveniently programmable. And we have a request in to a company that's working with the town to change the programming of the thermostats so that the setbacks when the rooms aren't being used um, can be more easily regulated. Um, and so that's a little hard. Uh, I, I programmed them in my other role as town hall steward, I programmed them uh, to keep the temperature moderate and with uh, six or eight degree, whatever the maximum is of setbacks to let in air conditioning, let the temperature rise and in heating season, let, let the temperature fall. Uh, if the rooms are unoccupied, but I think the town could do better if we could get our contractor to wake up and help us with the things they promised us almost a year ago that they would do. Hmm. Well, who is in a good position to poke these contractors and ask them about that? Um, um, that's something that that um, I think Keith was in contact with them last, um, and we can ask him to poke them again. Um, okay. Yeah, and Keith seems like the right person for that. <clears throat> okay. Well, I, uh, I, I would say if, if the historical society is happy with the current level of the rent, that extending it to three years for one is fine. I, it seems to be an inconvenience for the historical society to, to come back every year. And we don't seem to have major variations in the, the town's costs in this regard. I'd agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Is the proposed revised uh, 
lease in your meeting material? Yes. 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 At, um, going from uh, October of this year, uh, that is two months ago, and uh, September 30th of 2025 are the dates that I see on the the lease in our package. That being the case, I would move that we approve the proposed lease. I uh, would second that uh, as amended. Okay. Um, all right. Then let's take the vote then. Um, those in favor? Fred? Yes. Julie? Yes. Me? Yes. Okay. Very good. We are speeding through here. We are almost done. Neil, Neil, if you hold this thing, we've got an item under administrator updates regarding town office space. Once there's Neil here, can we ask about that? Um, I want to. Oh, you mean all, all, under old business? Uh, yeah. Under all old business, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Do you want to? Uh, I'm happy to bring that forward because that's really the next thing on the agenda. There, I don't think there's any. No, we've got another presentation, but as long as Neil's here. Oh, okay. Oh, oh sorry. I didn't mean to go over that one. Um, yeah. Can we bring old business up one then? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Uh, to get Neil's input, I'm happy to do that. So, uh, and let's, let's make it not uh, long. Under all business, we have to discuss the warehouse space at the town offices becoming available on January 1st, 2023. And I think somewhere in the discussion, you know, spitballing, we didn't know what, if, if any of that space, historical society might be interested in. So the historical society would be interested in dry storage space for some items. And for other items, it needs climate control storage space. So um, mm. if there is space, we would have more convenience in using it. But particularly, we are currently having to rent climate controlled space to protect fabrics and paper mm. that can't fit into the museum because most of the museum is display space. So yeah. there's not much storage space in town hall that the historical society could use. Okay. And, and is that big back room considered climate controlled? I mean, I've, I've been back there. I've, I've never felt like it was sweltering or freezing in the winter, but I've not been back there that much. We would want there to be humidity control for some of the items, both to prevent rust on metal items and to prevent yeah. uh, mold and so forth on okay. paper and cloth. All right. So it sounds yeah, like it we, might be to be determined. Neil, go through the space and get an idea of what we're talking about. Yeah. And, and alternative might be that it could be segmented, if that's possible, and do better climate control in a segment of the space if it's not entirely climate controlled. Yep. I'd be happy to look at that, uh, to think about that need that would be helpful to our budget. And I think help to protect the historical uh, records of the town. Okay. That's good. All right. Well, then I guess we put something on your plate, Neil, to come by and take a look and help us figure out if it's actually useful space for you or not. And um, and if so, what kind of arrangement might, you, might we make? We have to do that. Amy Lavalley had me come look at a um, strange object <laughs> in, in that space that is low. Uh, Joyce will appreciate this. It's a lantern slide projector. Mm. You know, big, bright light and heavy duty lenses for projecting to the front of an auditorium oh. uh, lantern slide. Uh, oh, I, I just. Works. But I have uncovered a treasure trove of lantern slides from um, the professor at Smith from the 1920s and 30s and 40s. Um, so, yeah, I, I, haven't, I haven't got a lantern slide projector, so that's very interesting. <laughs> May need to be rewired, but I, it looks like it's still in good physical shape. Mm. Uh, so we could see. I haven't used a ladder slide projector in 50 years, but I used to use it. <laughs> as far as the space goes, I think we'll need to 
someone's going to need to get some sort of estimate on what a what amount of space you'd be looking at and what it would cost to make climate control to your satisfaction. Right. We'll take a look at what's there. Yeah. And we have good dimensional information about what we have in several other storage spaces. Yeah, and then figure out what it would cost to get that done. Okay. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, I think we can release you then, Neil. Yeah. Okay. Unless you, think, but it's a public it. meeting. You can stay for for as much of this as you want. Understood. I have to go give uh, insulin to one of our cats. So. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. That sounds like an excuse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a good one, though. Yeah. Yes. 12-hour intervals. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, we've got our very patient folks from the FERCOG to talk about mass in motion um, and about, uh, let's see, uh, supporting age-friendly planning in Waitley and in the region. So I understand this is going to be like 15, 20 minutes or so? Yes. No, and it's mostly you're here to just tell us stuff. We probably don't have to vote on anything. No, I mean, you might decide to vote on the memorandum of understanding, or you can save it for a future meeting. There's okay. All right. I'm just going to give uh, oh, these are copies of the MOU. Oh, and that's the thing that's called the participatory agreement, or no, it looks like it's already been signed. No, this is the memorandum of understanding. I don't know if it made it in your packets because I sent everything over to Brian yesterday. I, don't I can put it. anything up that you need that. You want or you to. can email it to me if everybody's got it in front of them there. I, I don't know what you just handed the other board members, but if that's in PDF form someplace, you can just email it to me. Is that the Whitley presentation to present? Uh, the Whitley presentation, the MOU, and the data. I think I sent you four things. Yeah, I think I forwarded, Joyce, I forwarded that to the board at 321 yesterday. Okay, I'll take a look for that. And, and because it, I'm Carol Foote from Life Path here um, with Rachel from the Burkhag. And I just wanted to say, you know, we know we have limited time. So we maybe don't necessarily have to go through the slides, but we did give you, you know, handouts and spreadsheets. And we can just do the highlights. Yes. Um, you know, just kind of save some time. Yes. But anyway. So yeah. let's go. Yes. So um, my name is Rachel Stoller. I'm from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. This is Carol Foote from LifePath. And um, Carol is going to start and then I'm going to interject. So a couple of years ago, LifePath took on this age friendly um, Franklin County and North Robin project. And it was born out of a movement, age friendly movement, um, that started over 20 years ago through the World Health Organization. And since then, AARP has taken on responsibility and um, direction of the age friendly uh, project. So we received some funding to kind of look at Life Path's catchment area of 30 towns in Franklin County and the North Clavin region um, to say, how can we make this area more age friendly? We are the area of uh, HP on aging, if anyone is unfamiliar with Life Path, um, and that aging services access point. So if you know Meals on Wheels or home care, you know, we coordinate um, a number of um, um, programs and services to serve people with disabilities, um, um, people over the age of 60, and caregivers. So um, as we are looking um, at this project um, and how AARP is kind of giving us a framework to work within, um, there are eight domains of livability that we are working with to, um, to you know, kind of define those buckets of where we can make some progress um, in, our, in our own communities. And those domains, sorry, is that right? Oh, next one. The next one. Next one. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hey, and there they are. Aren't they beautiful? Uh, <laughs> so, housing, outdoor spaces, transportation, communication and information, civic participation and employment, respect and social inclusion, health services and community support, and social participation. So, with all these domains in mind, um, we in this project, we 
asked towns to say, yes, I want to be more age friendly. And Waitley is one of those that said, yes, we will do that and submitted um, a letter um, to say, you know, we have the designation. So that was a great first step. And then Life Path conducted the survey and we did um, secure responses from people in Waitley plus across the region. And I'm gonna share with you some of those highlights um, after Rachel says a few words. Okay. So um, I am the Mass in Motion Coordinator for Franklin County, and I have actually been in this role for about 10 years. Um, Mass in Motion is a statewide movement, so it's not, not a program um, that promotes opportunities for healthy eating and active living in the places that we live and work and play in our communities. Um, and for the past 10 or so years, some of the things that we focused on on a regional level in Mass in Motion were promoting um, complete streets policies and projects in the towns, which you're probably familiar with, uh, promoting this regional age-friendly strategy before we had the opportunity to apply for funding to support it, um, and doing some work with farm to institutions. So we worked closely with school food services um, to help them get more access to local farm workers. Last year, so just a little over a year ago, um, the state issued a new request for proposals for mass in motion. So it was a, a totally new procurement and they decided that they wanted to reduce the number of communities that would have funding, but increase the amount of funding. So before, I think there had been 29 communities throughout the Commonwealth that were involved in mass in motion. Um, so they wanted to reduce it. So we decided that we would apply to complement the regional age-friendly Pro project by supporting towns in developing their individual age-friendly strategies. So this would give towns a chance to think about what are the most compelling issues in our town and what can we do about it. So 11 towns, including Waitley, signed on to support this project and to be part of it. We submitted the application last December. We didn't actually hear until last May and then the funding started in July. And so, and it took us a while to sort of get organized. Um, so now we're here presenting the, this next incarnation of Mass in Motion for Franklin County, which is focused on age-friendly work. Um, some of the sort of tenets of working with Mass in Motion is that we look at how to change community conditions by addressing root causes of issues. So not just the surface level issues, but actually what's underlying them. So that's part of the work. Another uh, tenet of Mass in Motion is we use a leading with race framework, which means that we understand how race, which is a social construct, affects health, um, it contributes to health equity issues. And even in communities that are predominantly white, it has an impact. And so, and we will be providing some training on that framework um, and also questions that we use uh, whenever we're a, assessing a policy or a program, we always ask what we call the racial justice reframing questions, which are uh, who benefits, who is harmed, who influences, who decides, and what are the unintended consequences. And so um, we will be working with towns to um, think about existing policies or situations using that framework, and then as they make decisions about future projects or strategies to use those questions again. So I'll give it back to Carol and then I have a bit more to say yet. So, you know, Rachel and I are working together. Her focus is more on the town of Whitley, and my project is more about the region, although we do want to provide the survey information that is Whitley specific. And if you were interested in seeing, you know, the other towns that you collaborate with, such as Deerfield and Sunderland, we can provide that information too. But I did provide a paper copy, and I think there's probably an electronic copy, but don't worry about putting it. <laughs> um, and the the red indicates Waitley's, um, you know, um, position on whatever the question is. 
and the black dot um, indicates the regional position. So it's just giving you a juxtaposition of where we stand against the region of 30 towns, you know, here in Franklin County and the North Quad. Um, so that is for your perusal at a later date. Um, but, you know, just kind of giving the highlights around Waitley versus the region and how um, Waitley respondents responded. I'll first tell you that there were 12 people from Waitley who were either over the age of 60 or were caregivers um, who responded to the survey. And we received 1,982 responses back. So while it only represents a half a percent, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it's still valuable for the work that um, the town of Whaley and its um, you know, residents will do in this age-friendly uh, work. Um, and so your respondents are generally younger than the regional respondents. Um, and you have a lower percentage of respondents reporting they live alone and a higher percentage reporting they live with a spouse or partner. So it feels like there are some good supports there in the home. Um, and though fewer respondents own their own home, though a larger proportion um, have lived where they do for more than 15 years. So you do have some longevity here. And some of this you may already know. Um, we understand from the lately respondents that there's a greater need as they consider making a change to their living um, situation around cost of maintaining their home, better access to transportation. We heard a little bit of that earlier, healthcare services and family or social opportunities. So those were all kind of places where people thought, I might need to change where I live to get better transportation, access to my family, that kind of thing. Um, um, but they feel that they have much better access to good home repair services and lawn care than the regional sample. So they feel well taken care of that way. Oh, we have a chuckle over here. That's good. Um, <laughs> we have a lot of lawn care companies. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense to us, you know, because you know your community better than anyone. Um, generally, residents are more satisfied with their outdoor spaces where you have benches and well lit streets and good signage. So, good job, Waitley. Um, and they feel very safe in their homes and communities. Um, again, it's clear there's much less access to transportation in Waitley than in the greater region, with 100% of those respondents saying their main way of getting around is driving themselves. This may need to go somewhere. I mean, that's that's also typical for the region, but um, what else should I share with you? I mean, <laughs> there's so much data. <laughs> um, I, I, reading through um, your data from your respondents, it felt like a very positive um, response from the people who live here. And that ultimately, um, the Waitley respondents are a great deal more satisfied with Waitley as a place to age as compared to the, the larger sample. So that doesn't mean there isn't work to do or there aren't any projects to find or, you know, that kind of thing. But I think that you're, you're working with um, a very positive starting point um, and to go up from there is great. Well done. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so getting back to mass in motion. Um, so I have I provided you with copies of the memorandum of understanding. Um, so what we are asking the towns to do, um, and there is plenty available for this, uh, if you look on page two, that's where the scope of work is. Um, and so I'll give you sort of an outline of the timeline. Um, which is also slide which, yes. one. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, the first step is to have an initial meeting with um, 21. There it is. Thank you. Uh, which is what we're doing right now, an initial meeting with the select board. Um, and I think I see somebody from the library here. Cindy. Cindy. Um, Hi, and... everybody. Hi, everybody. Is there anyone from the Board of Health? I'm not sure. Um, so um, I did invite some other folks. Um, but so then, the, so this is a, just the initial meeting to sort of let you know what's going on and present the 
uh, memorandum of understanding. And then the next step for the town would be to convene a work group that would work with me and some other for COG staff on the rest of the process. So the rest of the process is first to take a look at the data for Waitley from the regional uh, assessment. There's also, in addition to the quantitative data, which is the, the survey results, there's also some qualitative data from focus groups. We'll look at that and fill in some of the blanks. You know, we realized that the sample from Waitley wasn't huge. So that's why we want to have the town convene a work group that represents different points of view that can review this data and say, well, what is true about this? What's maybe not complete? There's also a few more questions that we would like to ask that were not covered in the assessment, particularly related to food access and food security. Um, so it would be great to have some folks on the committee who have experience being older adults in town, who might have experience with a disability, who might have experience with food insecurity, who can represent um, these different points of view. Um, so we'll examine the data, we'll try to fill in some of the gaps, we'll try to identify what are the um, underlying causes of the most compelling issues in the community, um, and then by the end of June, identify a strategy or two that the town would like to take on. Um, there's also an important part of the timeline, which will happen in February, which is a health equity training that we will be providing and that we uh, would like towns to send at least two people to. It could be um, folks from the work group. This will be an in-person training in Greenfield. We're hoping to have a full day training with fantastic lunch and breakfast, um, although we are interested in your response about whether or not that's realistic. I, I will say we asked in Leiden yesterday and the folks in Leiden said that they thought that they could manage a, a, a one day training, um, not to put any pressure on it or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then the focus of the health equity training will be to talk about this concept of health equity and how different people's health is a function, not just of their access to healthcare, but also things like food access, access to physical activity, how welcome they feel in their community, how much connection they have with their community. So um, that will be a, a learning experience for all of us that will help to um, propel us into the next few months of planning. Um, there is money available through this memorandum of understanding. There's $4,230 per town, might be a little bit more available. Um, and that's for this planning process through June 30th. Then next year, there will be probably about that much available to towns for implementation. Um, that money can be used in any way that supports the planning process. So if you would like to compensate folks for being on the work group or compensate a convener of the work group or compensate people for attending the health equity training or paying for transportation, food for meetings, uh, Obviously, you don't need a projector. One town said they needed a projector. Um, so, you know, anything that will support the planning process, that funding can be used for. Um, and then next year, uh, that money can be used to implement uh, a strategy that you choose. Or if you decide on something that's a little bit more than $4,000, which most things are these days, um, we will help you to look for sources of funding, but at least you will have a a plan moving forward of some of the things that we'd like to do. And 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 we'll just, you know, want to be clear that, you know, Waitley has um, you know, signed on to Mass in Motion and Waitley has signed on to um the age friendly project or being recognized as being age friendly. So that that is all sort of established already as far as, you know, what do we do now? What did we do before? What, you know. Um, so we've got, you know, that commitment into, um, into this work. Um, and actually, the next slide is, and we don't need to go over all of them, but just that, you know, the practical and age, uh, and practical aging dementia friendly examples. Um, so it's, slide oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there were two in there. Um, you know, it can be as simple as adding a bench where people have said, you know, it'd re be really great to have a bench here um, or or something, you know, more um, uh, mm -hmm. comprehensive. Um, but, you know, what we know is that 
our communities are aging faster than other other places across the U.S. And so giving some good thought to how do we make that better uh, for all of us because no one's getting any younger. <laughs> um, and any any um, any projects that are taken on actually um, positively affect across the age spectrum. So, you know, it's kind of just a wonderful thing all around. However, we can embrace it and move forward in the movement. Um, and, um, Carol mentioned this, but our work is complementary. So, like, I, am, I actively work to support the regional planning. I'm part of Carol's steering committee. Carol and I uh, have been doing these visits to uh, select boards together because we want to really demonstrate that this is uh, that we're collaborating on this. Yeah. And so we'll just reiterate that Rachel's project is very much town focused and um, you know my project is more regionally uh, focused and we are getting some work groups together that are um, in themed uh, groups. So there's going to be a work group in transportation, a work group in housing, a work group in health and community supports, and a work group in um, civic uh, uh, engagement. And, um, you know, if there's anyone out there in Waitley World that would like to join in a regional, um, you know, planning process, um, please don't hesitate to be in touch with me, which is on slide 25. And <laughs> You're so good. And, <laughs> and Rachel. <That> <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, and then, you know, for the town planning, I yes. know how you might want to. Yeah, well, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I also wanted to mention one more thing because we are in Waitley and we know that um, Waitley, Deerfield, and Sunderland share the South County Senior Center. And so it is, it is realistic if the towns would like to team up to plan strategies. That's totally fine, but we did want to give each town a chance to do its own sort of assessment um, and you know identification of the most compelling issues. And then if it turns out that there is opportunity to work with either the South County towns or other towns, that's certainly acceptable. Uh, but we want, we want each town to have a chance to look at its own sort of data and situation first. That's it. Do, do any folks have questions for us? How do we clone ourselves? <laughs> so we can help you with this. Well, do you, can you think of people who might be good for the work group right. that are not you? That's a possibility. Yeah. 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 That's the issue of trying to lose the work group. The, the, and, and the work group doesn't have to be big, you know, but we're thinking maybe six to eight people, but even mm -hmm. fewer, you know, it's that's really up to the town. We're not dictating. Mm -hmm. It's a great program. Thank you yeah. for the work group. Well, we're yeah. excited we're and it excited. feels like there's some good momentum. There's lots of interest. We're kind of at this point where it's like we're ready to really start, you know, making some moves in the town and in the region. And now we just need, you know, some people who are excited about, you know, taking on these what what are fairly short term, um, you know, initial um, mm -hmm. assignments uh, mm -hmm. to move us through the spring and to June, and then um, and then what happens after that, um, you know, may or may not be that same group. But do you have mm -hmm. folks who are potential? Actually, I'm interested. Uh, <laughs> not about asking. You know, <laughs> we will go away and don't. Yeah, don't name names right now. Right. So, so I think historically, in in, in Joyce, I, you might yeah. remember as well. I, I think the the board of health was really sort of the mm, yeah champions of, of the mass emotion and the aging in place, and it was overlapped with lately neighbors, which might now be Valley neighbors. I'm not sure yeah. how mm. that has evolved or not, but. Um, yeah. So Fran is the first one that comes to mind. Fran Fortino, yeah. um, I think, uh, I think Becky Jones may have had some some role in that as well. So the Board of Health was really our sort of local champion. Great, that's um, great. Yeah. And, and then you correctly identified you were a member of the of the South County Senior Center. So our local council on aging isn't very active because that's sort of been replaced by um, the the. Yeah. The senior center and the board of oversight and um 
and uh, just just to note that the the three counts did have a senior needs assessment that was completed last year i think was Joyce, does that sound about right yeah yeah i think the results came out in the spring last year um so that's also available great um, and that will be very important in this planning process to use data that, yeah. any data that you already have yeah so that was for that was for Sunderland. well each town yeah. I, they're each all, town but did. the three towns Sunderland. Wait, yep. that process with, with UMass Boston. Um, but my recollection is that it was really the Board of Health that was driving a lot of this. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, I have to think a little bit about that. I mean, we've got so um, several groups that are, um, I don't know, splitting up the work and or working together. I know that sounds contradictory um, between the Valley neighbors, um, the Board of Health. For example, our public, uh, the, our senior center advertises about the our public health nurse being available, um, and they're they're trying to they they have a public health nurse who often comes to senior center events, and so there's a lot of the health and food insecurity is one one thing they you know they come up with a little um, food pantry uh, that really anybody can go to, um, uh, and right now our focus there is on finding a long-term facility. So we can't spend the $4,000 on a new facility, but <laughs> I'm trying to think about, I mean, we, we've, we've got people working on this who will probably know very well um, where to put that resource. And um, I, I, I am trying to think of how could uh, like three towns work together and have it not be a burden on the current senior center director um, who, who's got her plate full. Um, so I, yeah, so it's not, uh, yeah, it's not clear to me whether we're better trying to coordinate across towns together. That really sounds appealing. Um, but if it turns into something else that we just hand to the senior center director, that's not gonna work. So I think, um, We'll have to think about that a little bit, but you gave us some stuff to think about. So I'm happy to. Uh, I'm happy. Uh, and there's to more in the handout. Yes. <laughs> and um, and and we really do want it to be up to the towns. You know what works for you. Like that's why I don't I don't want to dictate. Oh, you should team up or you shouldn't team up. It's really um, we want this to be useful to the towns and for you to end up with some mm -hmm. plans and and ideas of how to move forward. That then when you know, when we find yeah. funding opportunities, you can plug those yeah. in. I wonder if, you know, being able to kind of get the groups together to would be uh, a, a uh, you know, whatever money it takes to facilitate that. If that might actually be a worthwhile um, thing to do with this money is to get the, the groups together who are working on these issues and um, and help them work together uh, they they do work together a, a bit, but maybe this will help them do something more. I, yeah. I appreciated your point, Joyce, about you know the senior center director <laughs> being very busy, and perhaps there is um, you know an age friendly project that could aid in you know mm. that activity level, or you know I don't know what it is, but you know you hit the nail on the head. Like there's so much work to do. <laughs> um, that that would be yeah. related to her role. So yeah. Yeah. So this is great. We appreciate you. Yes, thank you so much for having us. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thanks for anything? coming by. Yeah. Feel free to reach out to us at any point and um, we look forward to the next um, opportunity. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Yeah. Select so board votes on the memorandum of understanding at a future meeting you can just send that to me by email and I'll have it signed and send it back to you. Okay. okay. All righty. So I think we're ready to move on to new business. Um the number one under new business is to accept the resignation of Lynn Sibley as treasurer collector effective February 28th, 2023. And my understanding is uh, if we don't accept her resignation, she'll just have to stay on, right? I asked that question. Thank she you. said no. Thank you. Thank you. She said she's just going to stop showing up on the 28th. Uh, okay, all right. <laughs> all right. I've tried for many months. 
Wow. Yeah, we don't need to vote on that, I guess, since we don't really have control over it. We don't need to vote, but I think we probably um, we should write a darn good letter of thanks for your service for the last probably Many years. somewhere in her letter. They said the number of years. We should take her letter and rewrite it as a thank you letter to her. <laughs> I mean, use her letter because it'll have like the facts correct. Um, Forty-five but, years. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that's uh, um, that's a long time of service, and uh, I just can't, you know, say the number of times I've I've used Lynn as just a, hey, let me explain this thing, and you tell me what's wrong with my thinking, or how does this thing work or how does that thing work and she's just been awesome and so fair-minded and uh approachable to everybody so i really um i really appreciate that i think uh I'm, is amy still there i think amy's got all those qualities too by the way i'm just not uh she hasn't worked here for 45 years so she doesn't get a letter until she's been here for a little longer than 45 years <laughs> but uh but yeah we should put together a letter or something and uh uh, when it gets closer to February, maybe um, we can think of something else appropriate to do. Um, okay. Um, uh, next item under new business is to discuss filling the upcoming vacancy in the treasurer collector position. And I understand we have like our typical procedures are already cranking into place. So maybe Brian can update us on where that stands. Um, yep, so we, we posted the um, the help ad because we need help. <laughs> um, and we're going to try to uh, start uh, the priority review of resumes or applications on January 3rd. Um, so we typically have uh, you know, a hiring or a screening committee that would that would do that and that would make a recommendation to the select board on on the candidate or candidates. Um, Obviously, if there's more than one, then, then the screening committee could obviously send more than one to the select board, and the select board could hold second interviews and mm. that decision. Um, we have we have not been blessed with that situation, um, at least since I've been here. Um, applicants and, and qualified applicants are difficult to come by, especially for municipal roles, especially for you know people who are experienced in municipal roles who can quite honestly can go to um, larger towns or cities and, and make more money. So it's sometimes uh, small towns are revolving doors for, well, one-way doors where people come and get experience and then, and then move on. Um, but we'll have to see, we'll have to see what, what, what we get yeah. back. Um, yeah. We posted it um, in the, which paper did we put it in? The quarter is that when we posted it on the Mass Municipal Association website, and a lot of times when it's posted on the NMA website, a lot of the various job boards, online job boards, pick those up. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we will have to see. Typically, if if we could, um, it's it's good to have one select board member on the on the hiring committee or screening committee. I don't know if anybody is willing I'll, to do that. I'll do it on So okay. I'm I'm good with Fred doing that. I was just wondering if there's like some smaller town whose treasure collector we could snag and pay, you know, 10 cents an hour more. <laughs> um, but uh, maybe oh I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that out loud at the public meeting. Um no, I think well there there are attractive things about our town that um um, so we, I, th I think we can make a good, a good pitch for somebody who wants a nice uh, kind of community to work in. So, um, Fred, thank you for stepping up for that. Um, all right. So it sounds like that's well underway. Is there anything else you think we need to chat about that at the moment? Um, I don't think so. Lynn had some, Lynn had some, um, uh, recommended changes to the job description, um, but I think we can take those up on the, you know, through the personnel committee, through the process that's going to. Okay. 
Um, I think we'll just during the during the the hiring process we'll 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 provide some draft changes to applicants if if if, if we need to. So okay. that there's um, at least yeah. awareness. It's just it's just to correct. It's just to add some things, reflect some mm -hmm. new duties that the treasurer collector is currently okay. performing. All right. Okay, very good. Okay, well then let's move along to the uh, licenses for mm -hmm. the year 2023. I got the list and looked through that. They look, It looked like a very familiar list. You must be really bored. <laughs> Joyce, we've got something here for the fun run. We can move that up on the agenda. The fun uh, run. Uh, oh, part E. e they don't yeah. want to stay here and listen to all the uh, the alcohol and in holders <laughs> license. And in the defense, they said they would, but they didn't say they wanted to. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, all right. It'd be out of alphabetical order, but for the fun run, I think we could have some some letters mixed up. Let's go to part E and discuss C uh, in a moment. So uh, let's move to discuss and vote on a request for a special event permit for the fun run at the Waitley Elementary School to be held December 17th. Eeks, that's in just a few days. Mm -hmm. um, and now usually with one of these, there's one of those um, forms and I'm just scrolling through. Yeah, I see, I found the form. So this is on its way through the various sign-offs from departments. I see Jim's signature. Um, I don't see the others. Uh, normally, we'll uh, uh, we can approve these like with the caveat that the other department heads sign off. Uh, I see Amy's hand up. Yeah, um, through email chain, everybody, all the other um, corresponding departments approved. Oh, okay. It's not okay. on the paper that you got. It's not on the paper that I have, but it's been approved. Okay, okay, very good. So even that's not a, a a thing we would have to worry about when we vote on this. Um, okay, well, uh, who's going to be determining whether the run was actually fun or not? That's my <laughs> question. <laughs> you know. um, and th is this actually an elementary school activity or it's something being held that kids are involved with? I don't really know what the fun run is about. Yeah, so this is our first time ever attempting it, um, but I'm hoping that some kids will participate um, I coach a program called Girls on the Run at Wheatley oh, Elementary yeah. School, and um, so I know some of them can run even more than 2.5 miles, which is our um, run this weekend, if we can do it, um, but um, I know the kids will come right now with hot chocolate and snacks. And, yeah, okay. We'll cool. All right. Uh, um, go ahead. Here, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, I move that we uh, approve the special event permit second. for the Waitley Elementary School Fund Fund. Okay, great. Moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor? Fred? Yes. Julie? Yes. Me? Yes. Okay, and I'll, I'll expect to report back about exactly how much fun there was. Give a for a weather date. I actually, if it's poor weather, we're just going to cancel, and then maybe we'll try again this Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thanks for your patience, and uh, really, there's a lot of licenses coming up. You might be interested in a lot of vacancies in town government. Yeah, <laughs> town government right now. There you go. <laughs> yep. Yes. You be our treasure collector. Working for treasure collector, yeah. Yeah, working for treasure collector. 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 Okay. Well, then um, I think as a maybe start her out on the cultural council. That's really our gateway drug. Yeah. Um, and then, nominations coming right now. Okay. I'm sorry, just a break. Can you give your name and address? So we have it. Yeah, so my name is Sarah Kells, and I live on 46 Longton Road. All right. So, so the minutes will be 
Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks. Sarah, thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, then great. Let's go back to the uh, license. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was having the hour meeting for us. That was scary. Yeah. Um, uh, I did not see any red flags on the list of license renewals. Um, uh, Julie and Fred? No. No. Then um, this is something where we vote and then we sign, right? And can we vote like the slate? I, I I believe so as long as we believe that these are accurate and I believe that they are. The, the okay. only questions I even question I have is the uh, Casterways licenses are not, the permit to open would be dependent on the restrictions that were put on independent of this, these licenses. But I, I remember that there were some requirements on fencing and yeah. like. Well, they, yeah, I think they are a part of the license. But that's not, but this has nothing to do with those, correct? Um, well, you would be re renewing those licenses with those attached conditions. Okay. Right. So those conditions yeah. would be renewed each year. Okay. So, um, so those conditions still get attached to these. Yes. Yep. And, and in this case, um, uh, we would not release um, the licenses until until we're satisfied with with insurance provisions. Um, so we would not give them the actual physical copy. And, and there's other discussions that need to happen related to mm -hmm. this, how many years related to police details and, right. and, and things like that that are sort of hanging out over the mm -hmm. issue of the, the whole yeah. other, other security and <clears throat> cameras and things like that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would entertain a motion to uh, renew the licenses. Well, I'll make the motion. I don't get to make that many motions as chair. I would move that we uh, renew the licenses uh, listed in our packet for alcohol, common fixtures, in holders, entertainment, automatic amusement devices, uh, used car sales, class one and class two. I'll second. Okay, great. Well, all those in favor then. Fred? Yes. Julie? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, next is a discussion item, which we don't have to vote on, but uh, we're looking ahead to the fiscal year 24 budget planning process. My understanding is similar, it'll be similar to last year, only maybe our timeline is going back to the more usual town meeting in April scenario. Is that correct? Um it's it's yeah it's like that until the select board would vote otherwise to change it. Um <coughs> so the request for, for budgets will be going out probably likely by the end of this week. I'm hoping to have them back um in January. Um so we would start the normal budget process the end of January, early February. Um, in the past, it's been uh, joint meetings with the Finance Committee and Select Board. Those have been held on Tuesdays. Um, so if, we, if the Finance Committee and Select Board wanted to continue that, we would probably just have it, you know, Select Board meetings would be, we would figure it out, but mm -hmm. let the yeah, meeting, yeah. you know, almost every week, yeah. Tuesdays, um, if that day is free. Um, but it would be it would sort of be the typical process that that happens. But at the same time, the personnel committee will start meeting, the capital improvement planning committee will start meeting, um, and then we'll help um, put together the budget and the warrant articles for as of, as of right now. What's scheduled for the end of April? There were some discussions um, with the finance committees from the different towns that I was that I was included on about. Um, the possibility of, of wanting to move all the towns, uh, annual town meetings back to give more time um, for budget review, especially of the schools. A lot of times it's, oh. it's they, they feel that it's too short of a time um, 
and it seems that it will be particularly short with the new governor coming in. Um, uh, the estimate that I've heard is that they expect the governor's budget to be towards the end of January. Um, and uh, that so that that really shortens the, the time that Frontier has um, to have their public hearing and have, have their votes because they have a, I believe it's 90 days or 60 days. I forget what it is. Do you remember? I don't know. Um, there's a sort of time period that, that Frontier needs to get their budgets to the towns before the first annual town meeting. So mm. whoever, has, whoever has the earliest town meeting gets from that day. So if there's a town meeting in April, everything is pushed up. You know, mm. Press boards. Um, really February, essentially. Yeah. Which doesn't give a lot of time for review, but and that's a that's a complaint that's that I've heard of right. since, since I've been yeah. here. Yeah, um, I think waiting till June though has different problems. And last year we did May. How was that as far as getting all the year end things able to be done? Um, I, I thought it was fine. I, I I don't think I don't think April's necessarily a problem. Um, we pushed it back because we wanted to have it outside. Yeah. Uh, so it's obviously not a lot nicer in May than it is in April. <laughs> Um, yeah. I actually so, I love having it outside. Um, yeah. I, I I thought that was great. Um, and May was warm enough. June was a little warmer. Um, there's always a little chance to rain, but um, if uh, if that's the case, we can move it indoors. You know, make a call at whatever time, three o'clock in the afternoon. Make the call as to whether it's got to move indoors. Um, but I, I did like the the ability to have it outside. I thought that was kind of nice. And I, I think it's a little extra work. Like I think the highway department did a lot of setup for us there. Um, and uh, moving, you know, moving things outside is a little more work than having things inside. But I like it. But I think just because I like it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best thing for uh, for the town. If there's a good argument for keeping it in April, um and and going back to that traditional time frame i'm i'm not opposed to taking that up either april seems to put a lot more pressure on the finance committee in particular with the school budget yeah the finance committee just often feels like they're over barrel they, they can't say anything because the school's coming okay here's our budget you've got 12 minutes to discuss you know to consider it discuss it and yeah We'll move to the town meeting back and we provide some, you know, in, in May rather than April, we we'll provide a little bit of time to. Yeah. Think about it more. Yeah. Especially in relation to the elementary school budget, but the frontier budget, that's one that gets really compressed because that's the requirements of the retail school agreement. And now I. So. Just in terms of in terms of budget development, I mean there there's there has to be certain assumptions that can be worked with. Um, it, I understand that the governor's budget is it, it, going to be later on towards the end of January is what I what I've heard. But I mean at some point we're developing budgets based on assumptions, and our assumptions will probably at least in the ballpark. Um, so it just seems like it, it just seems like the process could. Be, still start without okay. those yeah. but that's just my opinion i'm not i don't have control of that but it just seems like those conversations can well can happen, it, right? would, would doing it in may make your life more difficult than closing it to a year end closing yeah and, and it potentially gives us some um, some more breathing room on the developing the budget side um we're never i mean no no matter when we have the town meeting we're going to have our budget before the state does. That's just, I can't remember a year when the state has had their budget done before town meeting time. Um, so we're always guessing a little bit. It's just that the guesses are a little better later in the season. Um, right. But they're not necessarily that much better. I feel like the time is not so much time for the state to catch up <laughs> in a way, but it's also, uh, you know, just more 
time for us to work on our budgets at the local level. Is that, I'm seeing Brian nodding. I don't know if that's because he's about to fall asleep. Or... <laughs> I have, I have coffee, it's all right. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it, in, it's a conversation we can also have. I, I mean, we don't need to vote on anything tonight. It's a conversation we can have with the finance committee as well. Um, okay. But that's, I know that's their biggest, their biggest gripe is, is their biggest complaint is with the, but not their only, complaint. not their only complaints, but they're with, with the, the, the shortness of the period that they have to review. Okay. And oftentimes it's, uh, oftentimes, and this is just been my observation, once we get to the public hearing stage of the budgets for the schools, I think. Mm -hmm. I think there's resistance to change when we hit that point. Uh -huh. um, I think earlier, and I've expressed this to the school administration, the earlier we can involve the finance committees in the budget development process, the better. That's my opinion. I don't know if they're going to, they could agree with me or disagree with me, but the sooner we can get the finance committees involved in the budget development process, the better. I, I think the finance committee has a little more input or sway with the elementary school budget than the frontier being a smaller part of frontier we really listen to what they have to say and yeah. smile and nod. <laughs> yeah. because, you know, ultimately we're still 10 percent of the district right okay well um i guess elementary yeah so what what i'm kind of hearing is that we're open to um pushing this town meeting date into may and we'd like to maybe brian you'll be talking to folks on the finance committee if you can kind of feel out uh what, what they think about that uh and you're, it sounds like you're talking to the other towns too if they're looking at may as well then that might actually work well for all of us uh, I was told that Deerfield was not changing theirs. Oh, okay. Um, one, one apple ruins the one rotten apple ruins the whole bunch. So huh. it that forces frontier to in the the short. Mm -hmm. They have they have to get their stuff done in in April then. Okay. All right. Well, um, if, it, good, if we do it, we're not doing it for frontier. We're doing it for us so that we can have a. a a more leisurely budget season okay because leisurely is exactly the word you think it is going to be busy also we've got fire department we've got treasure collector yeah. on top of whatever they have to do with colos and the like yeah. Yeah. okay um, all right, are we done with the budget planning process at the moment? Okay, good. Uh, we've already voted on that fun run. It's time for the all important town administrator updates. So the um, the installation of the modular offices behind the treasure collector town clerk's office have been completed. Um, I could walk the laptop back there and everybody could see them, but it'd be easier if people just would stop by, they could um, they could see if anybody's interested. Um, and we're going to uh, figure out um, the best arrangements of, of um, different offices and we'll uh, move people in as, as needed. Um, There's a, I mean, we have a little bit of work. Mark didn't finish the lights, right? I'm sorry. Did Mark finish the lights? No, he okay. came to look at gotcha. what we wanted today. He we said need, it's going to be a couple of weeks. Yeah, we need to rearrange some of the light switches so people don't have to walk all the way to the back of the building to turn on lights in the front, front of the room. Um, but other than that, the, the should be um, okay. pretty set. Um, Mass Municipal Association annual meeting. Um, is scheduled for uh, January 22nd and January 23rd. Um, that's something that um, I plan to attend. Then I 
usually attend except for when they didn't have them because of COVID. Um, if any of the board's interested, you could email Amy and she could get uh, you registered. Um, so Fred had brought this up, um, updates by regional entities or organizations. Um, Scam is trying, I was just naming the, the regional one, Scam is trying to be South Kai Senior Center. Um, is there a desire to have uh, periodic updates um, from these organizations? So uh, Scams is a little bit strange at, at, at this point because it's a former select board member who's on the board. So there's not that communication that can happen at the meeting, right? It's, it's you know, Joyce is on, Joyce is the South County Senior Center Board of Oversight representative. So if there was something going on with the South County Senior Center, Joyce could bring it up at a meeting. Um, same with Tritown Beach. Um, so I don't know if, if I don't know what how we how the board wanted to sort yeah. of please. Well, it, it just just what triggered it for me was seeing an article that Hatfield's having issues with their EMS paying being able to afford it. They're looking for other options, including possibly the contracting with or becoming a part of. South County. And I think that, and I looked at the South County uh, Board of Oversight, and they had a meeting in November where Hat County Hatfield was on the agenda, and we never heard anything about that. Mm. And I actually, I ran to Jonathan not long ago, and he said, oh, he wasn't at that meeting. Mm. But I think if Hatfield, if there would be an arrangement or you know, consideration of having Hatfield join South County or contracting with South County, it would affect us tremendously. We should know about that. Right. And that um, yes. you know, some, somehow we need to know what's going on, particularly with this this development with Hatfield. Yeah. Mm. So would you be suggesting um, updates on a on a specific periodic schedule or updates when anything of import seems yes to be all, all the above okay <laughs> all right but we need to know what's going on we need to be in the loop yeah right yeah. and that, that as, certainly on this we are have not been on the loop that shouldn't have to read in the newspaper right. that Hatfield is considering yeah oh, that makes sense yeah So no, what so I'm not, I'm not suggest I don't know what the answer is. Yeah, what but, would we request or how would we suggest it? Yeah, because no, our normally we get we hear from them once a year, uh, mostly at the finance committee meeting. They come in and do a big review of what they've done and their budgets, and we find out lots of good things there. And that's a that that only well, happens. That, that, that's, Generally budget oriented, and this this is yeah. But they um, review services. They review a lot of like uh, you know how are they providing the services and what uh, they go over a lot of their numbers there. That's probably the most thorough review we get right now, and it comes with the budget season. So this seems to this is and this is something our, else. What should our involvement in ongoing potential change in their operations, or you know. In, in our arrangement with them, yeah, or you know, everyone, not just wages, but you know, the way they operate. If they're taking on another town responsibility for another town, that's a major change in their operations. Right. Would it? I mean, would it be appropriate to have a selectman as our boo representative on South County and replace Jonathan? Who I'm, I'm sure he's he's you know doing a good job for the most part. But if we really want the the easiest way without putting an additional burden on the folks running the emergency service, uh, you know, having to worry about well, is this an important enough thing that I got to report to select boards independently? Um, if we've already got some one of us on the boo, then that communication will happen a little more naturally. So maybe well, that, that, that's where we should be getting the communication from. We should have heard something about this November 15th board meeting, whether it was discussed, what was said. Yeah. And 
we didn't get that. Yeah. So maybe um, I, I, I would I would certainly consider uh, having having a different representative on the board of oversight. Have it be one of us, and let that be the way to fix the communication problem, rather than trying to construct some other sort of uh, communication line. That kind of, I, I, I think I don't want to impose on them something that. It's just going to be another, uh, you know, burden on them. Um, and I think, you know, one of us who, if we we're on their board of oversight, we would know when something reaches the level of, oh yeah, I better update our select board on that. Um, it, it seems like the easy solution. I, um, I would. Um, I, I think that that is, is the best solution. Yeah. And you know, Jonathan was a member of this board. Right. When it was... Yeah. And he was doing us a favor by taking, you know, keeping that role while we were all very tied up with, with other things. I guess then the, the question becomes, all right, who's going to take that place on that board of oversight and Who's going to tell Jonathan? I think Brian should be the one to. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> well, we should have this. I mean, this is sort of brought up under town administrator update, so we should probably have. We probably have a formal agenda item before. Yeah. And yeah, so I'd like to put some agenda for the action. You know, formal action okay. taken. Um, let's then let's put that on our next agenda then. Um, and maybe. Me. <laughs> monthly monthly okay. yeah um yeah and maybe um for some of well Tritown Beach I don't do we have a selectman on the Tritown Beach board of uh, John, Jonathan continued that that's always sort of been his pet project right there is a vacancy, there is a vacancy on the on the Tritown Beach commissioners okay from Waitley I think we can have all the three commissioners. Oh, oh, let's get the fun run people. <laughs> Poor Sarah. Oh, too bad she left. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we have I think well we we could we could check out that. But it might be what well, maybe we could make a habit of um during uh town administrator updates, anyone who's on a board of oversight does a quick update of what their board that they're overseeing uh, or group that they're overseeing. Like uh, I could, the, in the selectmen's meeting after each South County Senior Center Board of Oversight, I could put, we could put a spot on there for uh, uh, South County Senior Center updates. And uh, if, if we've had a meeting recently, or if we've not had a meeting, I can just say, I don't have any updates because we haven't had a meeting since the last select board meeting or something like that. That that might be a way to keep it, make it regularly come up in the agenda so we don't forget. Because I could honestly see if I'd gone to a board of oversight and the well, Hatfield approached us, but you know, we haven't really made any decisions yet and they haven't really made a proposal yet. I might not have thought that rose to the level of informing everybody, right? But um, if it were a regular item, I might have thought of that. Mm -hmm. so. um, and horning in on your town administrator updates there. Sorry. We'll, we'll make us. We'll make a special separate section. <laughs> okay. Who updates? That way I can protect my turf. <laughs> 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 um, cannabis control commission. Um. If you recall, there was legislation that passed that amended the, the existing state laws. It really, with, with two respects, uh, two important as uh, two important aspects in terms of municipalities. One is host community agreements, and the other one is um, uh, social equity, social equity um, policies that municipalities need to adopt. Um, the legislation gave the Cannabis Control Commission the authority to 
um, essentially the authority to review and essentially strike out offending provisions or provisions that they find offending in those community agreements. But they need to do a, a regulation setting or rulemaking process, and that's what they're about to start. Um, so they're going to they're going to be formulating the the implementing regulations on host community agreements and uh, social equity social equity um, applicants. So it's just something that I wanted the the select board to be aware of. Um, there are a lot of emails going back and forth about um, asking municipalities to to stay involved and. Um, and uh, provide comments when necessary on when those draft regulations come out. Um, because it, one question that's unclear is whether the regulations can have, um, whether the regulations can affect uh, contracts, host community agreements that have already been signed, mm -hmm. whether there's a retroactive uh, part um, or, or authority that they have. Um, but that's a question that, that they'll, they'll need to answer. And maybe the courts will need to answer it. Um, so it really hasn't impacted the new legislation hasn't impacted us yet. Um, there is some, um, I think there is some movement at the um, the retail shop that's licensed um, at the Sugarloaf shops, the red building. Um, there's some movement there in terms of trying to trying to. Uh, sell the existing um, shop there. Um, that host community agreement is due to expire, um, I believe, at the end of the year. Um, so I suspect we may see a request to extend or renew that host community agreement. And I don't know if there'll be any discussions that will come up about, um, you know, wanting to modify that or amend that in some way that may be different than what it is. And that's a, that's a discussion we would have to have at that time. Um, but I suspect that's probably likely because it, it's, it's going to expire if they don't try to extend it. it. It's my understanding that the people with the current agreement do not intend to open or have uh, abandoned their retail. My understanding is that they're trying to sell. Okay. Yep. They're so trying to sell. They're, the, they're trying to sell someone so essentially that they are not. Yeah, they do not end over themselves. Yeah, and which group was this again? The Colorado company? Well, originally I think it was a com a company called Harvest, oh. who was the, who, who was the parent company of Tor uh, Toro Verde one, two, and three LLCs in Greenfield, Waitley, in Northampton, maybe. Uh -huh. Um and I believe that Harvest is no longer the Parent company, there's been some transactions and they're trying to, okay. they're trying to sell those. They're the they're the, the, the big out of state folks, not the local people who are right. growing down the river, river road and selling yeah. it. Right. Yeah. Okay. The red building, and that's I believe that's under a lease. It, it was a lease arrangement. Um, so it's just something that we need to keep in the back of our back of our minds. Um I guess just one grant update. Um, there was an email from JP Kennedy from the fire department who said that uh, the fire department received a firefighter safety equipment grant uh, for $10,400 um, to purchase um, some S an SCBA, self-contained breathing apparatus um, for the fire department. And I think that's, all that well one other one other uh, topic there was um the select board did receive a letter from the conservation commission um well the chair of the conservation commission in regards to um the property at 71 um chestnut plain road um and they were expressing concern about um well expressing possible expressing concern about possible activities on the site um, related to um, find a letter here. Um, increased activity at the site um, in the parking of construction vehicles and um, 
the storage of chemicals and things like that, or the possibility for the future storage of chemicals. Um, the site, the letter references that the site is in the off protection overlay district. Um, so there's concerns about, you know, certain activities negatively impacting the aquifer. Um, the letter mentions that because there's no jurisdictional wetlands on the property, so the Conservation Commission doesn't really have jurisdiction um, over any of those activities, um, but they encourage the, the select board and town administrator to, and really should be the, the zoning enforcement officer to monitor um, the situation on that property. And there's also a letter that was included in the packet that was from um, the building inspector to um, the owner of the property requesting a uh, an inspection of the site, um, which is permissible under the uh, 2013 special permit that the owner has for um, essentially the storage of explosives there. Okay. Uh, there's those letters. And I'll, I'll continue to provide updates as as the things happen there. Um, but that's. That's about it. Okay. All right. Um, under items not anticipated, do we have anything else there? Okay. Move to adjourn. Oh, uh, wait. Next meetings. Can oh, we do next meetings? Meeting. I'm sorry. Um, do we, it says TBD and January 10th. So let's pull out the calendar because that sounds like the next meeting is the one that's um, up in the air. I just wanted to confirm that. I think we need to schedule in case we get like a permit renewal request or something that would have to be done before the end of the year. We can always cancel the meeting. We could, yeah. So the twenty, so we can do the twenty. I'll tentatively plan the twenty seventh because I think that's what we had. Yeah, I think that's what, so. We'll keep that there, and then after that, the tenth of January for the first meeting of the new year. Okay, then I'll uh, go go that for it. And now I'll second. Okay. All those in favor, Fred? Yes. Julie? Yes. Joyce? Yes. All right. Great. Good night, everybody. Next time, I think I'll be in person because today's the last day of classes. So that's, uh, I like got out of my last class and ran to the computer to, to be here with you. So I'll see you in person next time. Are there things to sign at the office there? All the licenses. Yeah. Yeah, all the licenses will need to be signed. All the licenses. Okay. Are they out there right now if I came on my way home from, from yep. work here? Okay. Yep. All right. Then I, I may see you if you're there in a half an hour. If not, I'll let myself in. Sounds good. And you need all the okay. Oh, and Hannah, how come you didn't get us any more grants? They're coming. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Okay. All right. Good night, everybody.